It's a big day today. Yes, it is. As you know, my friend Steve Smith is here with us today. And we're going to have a great time talking about the music business. Or whatever we call it today. <laughs> oh. So good to see you oh, on oh, this Wednesday. We got Instagram going today. Everybody in Instagram land, how are you doing today? It's good to see you all. I'm ready to play some music too. I love to play music. We got guests. We got guests already showing up. That's a good thing. We want to see you all at the show. Yeah. What's going on?
going on? I see Steve is here. Valentino's here. trucks, buses, but no more airplanes. We don't get to go in airplanes at all anymore. Everybody, welcome to the show. It's a big honor to have you with me today. And it's Wednesday, February the 10th. Can you believe we're already approaching the middle of winter? Unbelievable. It just seemed like yesterday we were on the road playing gigs and then all of a sudden it was over. And here we are making lemons out of lemonade. I guess that's the new phrase of the uh, day. And uh, it's so wonderful that we have this technology because we can still stay alive. And I've been very fortunate to be able to use uh, my skills to play music daily or at least quite a few times in the week. So it's a big honor, as you can tell. Uh, I'm bringing in a very, very good friend of mine and a special guest. And without further ado for me, I'm going to move over to the guest feed and I'm going to introduce, ladies and gentlemen, the great Steve Smith. Steve, how are you? I'm okay, Tony. Man, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Good to hear you play. <laughs> I love that, Cars, Trains, and Buses. That's Man. a groovy tune. We used to play that. That's our tune. <laughs> we, 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 in fact, we recorded that. It's coming out soon, right? Well, I, I don't know exactly when it's coming out, but we we recorded it, and it's uh, with Vinny Valentino, and uh, it it when the time is right, we'll put it out. That's right. Whenever that is, <laughs> man, we don't know, right? They keep predicting things, but I guess when we we'll know when it's the right time, huh? Yeah. 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 How are you doing? You're in New York, I see. I'm in New York. Yep. Um, which is why we can actually do this because I really have internet here. Uh -huh. <laughs> if, if, at the other places I live, I got pr pretty much no internet, you know, just a, a little hot spot that doesn't work all that great. But, you know, here in New York, uh, good internet. And uh, my wife, Diane and I are, we've been here, you know, since the first of January. And it's been really nice to be here, um, life, it's its not totally normal here, of course, but New Yorkers have really adapted. And, you know, it feels good to be here. Yeah. 
you know, there, uh, most, a lot of restaurants are open. It's, uh, you know, if it's a warm, if there's some sun out and it's warm enough, we, you know, we can eat outdoors. You know, they they serve food outdoors, or you know, we get takeaway or delivery. So, you know, living here, in a lot of ways, is is pretty easy because of that. You still feel like you're alive. Yeah, it's like it's it's you know, and and of course, then for we can. Uh, get fresh direct you know they, they deliver groceries or whatever you want you know so um it's it's pretty it's okay it's been okay that's that's i was concerned i didn't know how new york was operating what about that nice italian restaurant we go to all the time they still yeah get, piccolo piccolo <laughs> yeah Amsterdam, yeah by 74th that was open for a long time and I and and they're they're closed right now, but it said closed for remodeling. Oh, good. Okay, because we yeah. got to go oh, back and eat over like there. Business. It just looked like temporarily they're closed. Maybe this is a good time for remodeling. Being winter, being hit and miss, yeah. they might as well do it right. It sounds like I well, if, you, if, this, if, if you see like what they what the restaurants have done to adapt is you know they started with outdoor seating. Wow. And it's either on the sidewalk or actually in the street. Wow. And and now as the cold weather comes, you know, they enclose, they put some roofs up and then they have heaters, <laughs> you know, so it's okay. It's, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. As long as the food's good, right? I guess it probably, it's like a, a la fresca, you know, probably good, you yeah. know? Wow. Yeah. Well, you're looking great, man. I, I miss being on the bandstand with you, Steve. Yeah, same here. Gosh, same. I look at those videos like uh, after our interview, I'm going to play one from when we did the when we did the drum drum clinic for Mr. Aiello up in Canada. I want to play uh, Johnny Comes Marching Home because, man, I miss having you behind the drums on that right. kind of yeah. stuff, man. That's a lot. Of, yeah, it's so much fun playing playing that music. And, yeah. And uh, yeah, I've been doing a fair amount of practicing, mm. you know, because because I haven't been, a, of course, like everyone, I'm not really able to do gigs. So I started my own um, series of making videos called From the Practice Room. Uh -huh. And I, you know, I, I'm taking a little break from it right now. I, I was putting at least one one something up every week, you know, what's something that I was working on or some kind of solo that I develop and record. And, and, you know, as time went on, I started with one camera and then two cameras and then eventually three cameras, you know, and it, it turned into a thing. It was a creative project. I would uh, film myself and then send all the footage to my buddy, Christian Grissat, who's mm. a really, really great drummer. And he loves, and he's very good at, at film editing. And he lives in the south of France, near Nice, France. And then he will edit it together, make a nice video. And so I put those up. So, you know, for people interested in seeing what I've been working on over the last year, um, it's, it's on YouTube is one easy way to see it. It's Steve Smith channel. You know, and all, and all the videos are posted there. But, you know, I have them all on my Facebook, which is um, Vital Information. It's like Facebook.com, Vital Information. Gotcha. Website, VitalInformation.com. You know, so there's ways of for people to check that out just to, to see what I've been up to. And and actually, I, I did play two gigs last year. Well, like... I played a bunch of gigs in the early part of the year, right. but I played two gigs in September yeah. at Birdland. Oh, really? Yeah, but but they were there was no audience, ah, and it was and it was uh, just playing for a film crew. So there was about four people. There was like three or four cameras and then a recording engineer, and we played in one day. We played. I played two. Uh, two different gigs and one was the music of John Coltrane mm -hmm. and uh, with sax 
two saxophones and drums. <laughs> oh, wow. That's whoa. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. It was like more free avant-garde, but, you know, some groove, some time, some free. And it was Donnie McCaslin mm. and Eric Alexander and myself. Really oh, great. two of my favorite guys. I, yeah. I love both of them. Yeah. And then, and then, that, and then we did a, a trio with uh, Helen Sung and Lonnie Plaxico playing the music of Bud Powell. Oh my gosh! So at some point, Birdland will they'll edit those and offer them on the Birdland website. They call it Radio Free Birdland to you know try try to get some money coming in. You know they recently did a GoFundMe mm -hmm. because they're trying to stay alive. You know and and so uh, Gianni and and some of his associates put put together a GoFundMe that I think's been pretty successful so far. But, you know, I'm hoping that club stays around because it's such a great place to play. And we played there, you know, two different years, two different weeks. And uh, I love playing. It's always, there. always a pleasure. Yeah, it's a great place to play. I I've been praying a lot for them because Johnny's uh, one of the finest people that I know, like you. You know, he's just down to earth, real hard worker. And, you know, they got to survive, you know. Yeah, he, I really want to see. Well, I want to see all the clubs survive. Yeah, of course. Because we need live music. You know, as as cool as it is to have, you know, what we what we're doing here right now. You know, people watching from home. It doesn't take the place of what it feels like and sounds like to be in the room with musicians and yeah. to really experience music live as it's happening yeah it's it's you know it's crucial for for us it's so important yeah it sure is say, it's great you're you are playing some gigs you were saying well there's just a local club and, i haven't Ohio, you're playing <laughs> uh just once in a while that like they they've been locked down for a while i mean like maybe once a month i'll go play it but it's a nice club in a in a way that they've got it all uh uh, uh plexiglass per table off so i feel Thanks safe to go in we come in the back we play the gig i mean you it's it's still kind of impersonal i mean you know you got Person. people out there in a, in a like like in cages you know <laughs> but at least yeah. you're playing live music with real people and that 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 changes yeah. the game you know a little bit so it yeah it really does yeah and they're they're getting to hear hear those instruments and it's a real obvious thing for, that I'll say, you know, but it's like, but it, but they're hearing the instrument as it's being played versus hearing a recording of an instrument. Mm -hmm. It's a really big difference when, when you're in the room with the, your Hammond B3 and the Leslie and you're, you're hearing that sound and feeling, feeling that that's really different than hearing it through headphones or speakers. I agree. And, and the same with drums, you know, drums is, is especially because it's most of the time when I hear recorded drums, it's diminished of what they really sound like. You know, drums can sound so big and beautiful yeah. and all the instruments, you know, yeah. what, whatever, guitar, saxophone, all of it. Like when you're in that room and it's an intimate enough, enough room that you're not hearing a big PA system that you're actually hearing the musicians on stage. Yes. There's nothing like that. No. You know, you're really hearing hearing the that music and and your presence as an audience member, it it influences the musicians. Oh. It, so you, it's an interactive experience that you know, hopefully <laughs> we will get back to at some mm. point. Man, I can't wait. Uh, I know that once it does, we're going to be celebrating, you know. I I just can't wait to be in that dressing room with you the way we rehearse things. You know, that's right. I got to tell you, you know, uh you've really inspired me as a musician. You know, I I know we've become friends and all that, but you know, the way you conduct yourself, I always tell everybody, and the way it is to be with you is just always an honor. I learn how to be a gentleman when I'm with you you know you're really really cool and the, the thing I really like most about you is that even when we're waiting in between sets you know you're practicing 
you know, how many musicians can say that, that at this point in your career and all the things that you've done and you're still going for it, man. You know, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. I'm still going to try to go for it, Steve. That's what, right. what, it, what is it about you that makes you want to continue to, to drive and be the best that you can be as a musician? Well, um, first of all, I, I like to warm up before the set. So, you know, so I have a little practice pad that I take with me and uh and and it's physical it's a physical thing i don't want to go on stage and not feel warmed up Uh and 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 that also explains you know somewhat in between sets like when we play at birdland we use we play two sets Mm -hmm. there's an 8 30 set and a 10 30 or 11 it's a long time in between (laughs) i I don't you know i don't want to go out there there's a second set cold yeah you know and i'm so i want want to stay warmed up um but also i i want to in a way keep my head into the music and and i don't take playing music for granted at all you know and and as jazz musicians we we want to be relaxed and we want to be conversational on stage because that's so much of what jazz is about is is the interaction and and the conversation that happens in the music um but i don't want to take it casually and then just get on stage and and not feel like i've i've got myself ready to play Mm -hmm. and to play the drums it's very physical and it doesn't mean that that i'm going to be playing hard or loud or anything it's just just dexterity i want the dexterity and and the touch to be there and so you know i give myself a good a good warm-up and then i try to stay warmed up in between the sets as well yes but but it's an interesting thing what i find is a lot of times you know in the dressing room we're hanging out and we're talking and you know we're and and one of the enjoyable things about playing with good musicians is you usually you become friends and you talk about family and you talk about you know what's going on in your life and and it's a and i feel like a lot of times we'll be talking and then we get on stage and it just continues yeah (laughs) but it's a different language now now we're just continuing the conversation but but we're using our instruments to do that kind of an interesting experience you know that sure is you know we know feels like that a lot of the time a lot of the time we know each other intimately in more ways than one kind of you know it's and that's what makes a band you know what in my opinion that when yeah. everybody has a connection to the other person it's not just a thrown together thing we got a history together already we've traveled we've gone through airports you've helped get us in real fast <laughs> right <laughs> yeah <laughs> Go it's to the great. United, the United <laughs> Club and hang out. <laughs> exactly. Come this way, guys. Okay, we're coming. <laughs> Man, that's. I mean, I bear. I did make one K last year. Oh wow! You know, the high status, but but um, I don't know what's going to happen this year. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be able to keep it. But maybe they'll it give you. Help. Maybe they'll it give you a break, work. like a year off or something, you know? They, yeah, hopefully. I, th- hopefully. I, I think they'll want to keep it, I hope, you know? Yeah. So what's uh, what's on the horizon now? What are you looking at uh, in terms of what you're trying to do or at least trying to move towards anything going on? You know, not really. I do have a few things happening, but I'm not, like, I'm not booking gigs or anything like that. I'm just staying, uh, you know, staying sheltered and 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 practicing here in new york i i practice on a practice kit because i live in an apartment building you know and you and when it's my room (laughs) basically like i live in in the upper west side and the building we're in i actually have two apartments in in the building and one of them is my practice space and guest room so whenever we play in new york tony lives in the guest room and then i pack up the drums and put them in the corner <laughs> yeah. but it's a practice kit you know it's got uh 
for the drummers that know, it's got Remo silent stroke heads, you know, so there's no, really no sound, very low volume sound coming out of the drums and mm -hmm. uh, Zildjian low volume cymbals. Mm -hmm. And then I can, I can play, you know, a little bit in a day and it doesn't bother the, the neighbors. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm keeping, you know, keeping up with that. Lately, what I've been doing is I turned the stereo on and I've been putting on some miles with Jimmy Cobb in Coltrane or Miles with Philly Joe and I just play along and, yeah. and swing and it's really fun. Yeah. Um, but Modern Drummer Magazine is working on uh, a book mm. of my cover, essentially my cover stories. I've been on the cover of Modern Drummer five times, you know, over, <laughs> over the course of about 40 years. Oh, congratulations. So, um, so they're they're working wait something just popped up on my screen oh. they're working on putting a book together that uh like a hardcover book that puts all those uh issues all my interviews together in one book and then i'll do a new interview just you know what what's been going on lately mm -hmm. and um well, i'll find a bunch of photos that haven't been put out you know from and uh, it'll it should be pretty cool. And I'm going to include an a, a, a download of a an album that I did of just it's like a full album of solo drum performances. Whoa! You know, four, 14 solos. Oh man! <laughs> I, I recorded it a few years ago, and I and I put it out in a, in another book that that's uh, has to do with my art project. Uh -huh. you know, making making art using lighted drumsticks yeah so um i put a the company scene four is the name of the company that put put the this book out with my art mm -hmm. and and i made a drum solo for every piece of art and and that's on an lp oh, 20, wow. it's like it's about 20 minutes aside <laughs> of these drum solos and they're not just free form you know that they're, they're very compositional yeah of course, uh, of course. But i want and but i had not released it other than the lp i see but i want I'm, i want to include it with this modern drummer book too as a like a bonus you know incentive to hopefully buy it <laughs> yeah 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 but that's you know that's a project that will take some time to put together so that's something that Modern Drummer is doing, but I'm, I'm working with them uh, to, to get that done. Wow, that should be a really cool project. I can't wait yeah. to see that. Yeah. yeah. Well, geez, man, Steve, I just can't thank you enough for visiting me uh, today. Please give my best to Diane. She's such a sweetheart. I, she's I always so kind to me when I come there. You guys take me out to dinner. and You know, I don't know how to, how to thank you for everything. You're such a great person, man. You know. Well, we always enjoy it when you're here, oh. and, and and we're playing the music of Groove Blue, <laughs> our our trio with Vinny Valentino. Always a lot of fun and a groovy experience. Oh yes. And I uh, look forward to when you can come here and and hang out in the guest room, and we can play a week of Birdland. Yeah, man, and then we'll travel the world again. I I can't wait. Yeah. All those places we've been already i'll tell you one of the coolest places that i ever walked into was that big beautiful beautiful theater in russia when we were playing in moscow that's right that was just incredible i just to to look out there and see that many people admiring our music uh for me was touching i just want you to know because of you you know that's that's an experience i got to share with the uh, the world so uh i'm looking forward to giving my best as we get back together and, and do it, you know. Sounds great. Same here, Tony. God bless you, Steve. Please take care of yourself, and uh, we'll be in touch, right? We'll be in touch, and I'm going to listen to the show and, and hear you do some great playing. Oh, God, that's great. Thank you, Steve. God bless you. I'll see you soon. Sounds good, Tony. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, that's the great Steve Smith. And uh, as you can tell, he's uh, just for real. And uh, it's an honor to have him as a friend. So I'm going to share a little funny story about him. 
we were playing a gig in New York. And you see these socks here? That's why I'm wearing the matching purple shirt. I'm going to turn off this bright light here. Um, there we go. Get back to the normal lighting. Uh, these socks, Steve said, well, actually, Diane, his wife, when he was on tour, uh, noticed that the cameras were on him close. And she said that he needed some sock action. <laughs> so these socks were donated to me by none but the Mr. Steve Smith himself so that uh, I could have some sock action too. So I thought it'd be appropriate today to wear a matching shirt with the uh, purple socks that were given to me by the great Steve Smith. Uh, thanks again, Steve. Uh, before I go on playing in my own music, I want to play some music of the Groove Blue. Uh, we've done many, many cool gigs together. As Steve said, we have a second uh, project that's in the can, and we don't know when it'll be released again, but it will definitely be released. So I'm going to do a couple of things so when I hit it, we're hitting it, okay? First of all, let me switch over here. Okay, so Steve was talking about the uh, website. Uh, this is vitalinformation.com. So if you want to keep up with what Steve's been doing recently with his practice room stuff, please visit vitalinformation.com. And uh, whatever there is to subscribe and be a part of his world, I suggest you do it because you just saw it. It's a great world. Uh, me and Vinny are uh, both uh, honored to play with Steve. And um, like he says to us, he says, we are a trio. And that's what makes me feel good about being uh, a lifer myself. So let me play a video that we did at this cool drum festival up in northern, Can northern uh, Canada. Uh, Mr. Agnalillo. He's a great guy, man. So watch this.
There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Now that's a party. <laughs> See, I'm laughing. I still remember those moments every day when I play here in my home. Uh, I still remember that feeling of playing live. Uh, like Steve mentioned it so eloquently that there's just something about playing live and having the feel of uh, the acoustics, the sound all around, uh, the the audience, the energy of the audience. Uh, and, uh, of course, when you play with a man like that that's coming at you with that kind of power, whoa, man, you better hang on for dear life because he'll run right over you. <laughs> Wow, thank you, Steve. It's been great. As my son, my little son says, he's got all the sticks that Steve uh, autographs for him. He goes, thank you, Steve. <laughs> he loves Steve Smith. <laughs> so that's really great. So thank you, everybody, for joining the show. You know, on Wednesday, I feature uh, the, a person that I really admire, is, of course, you know, Steve Smith. We're packing him in with drummers. Next week, my friend Harvey Mason will be here, the great Harvey Mason, and we'll be talking about some wonderful tours and things. Uh, another fine human being first, and then extraordinary drummers. Uh, I've been blessed in my life, as I've said many times in the show, because of the instrument that I play. I've been blessed to play with some of the finest uh, in the drum area, in the guitar area, and in the horn area, because that's what usually organ trios are like so I'm gonna play a little music as you know on my Wednesday segment we also bring creating health and my good friend dr. Davis gives us some advice on coping with this pandemic but first let me find some kind of groove and play might as well groove because we just did a nice uh, what do you call it uh, Nice did a nice swing, so let's play something different. A little groove music, okay? Dr. Davis likes this one. Welcome Brazil and Greece. Italia.
make her scream. She loves it. Take you a little bit to Arabia. Funky now, and it's funky always. Oh yeah! Welcome to the show, Wednesday, February the tenth. It was a special day for me. I got to see and talk to one of my favorite people, the great Steve Smith. Thanks for obliging me and uh, joining me. But I'd also like to thank all of my favorite people, like Debbie Hill. Thank you, Debbie Hill. God bless you. I really appreciate you and Gordy and your generosity it's uh it's been twos and fused these days i think uh, unfortunately uh the money has gotten real tight for a lot of people but i'm here every day i hope that i brighten your spirits and make you feel better every day because to me that's really what it's all about looking forward thank you matt god bless you this is really cool thank you very much uh, before I bring on Dr. Davis, I thought maybe I'd change it up just a little bit and play uh, a beautiful ballad on the piano. How's that? Uh, this was done by the great Jimmy Smith on the organ, and he did it as a ballad. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to do a little uh, piano music for you, something a little different. <laughs>
I'll close my eyes. The great Jimmy Smith. Wow. Thank you, Michael. God bless you, Airdom. Brent, thank you very much. You guys just helped me out, man. I appreciate that. God bless you guys. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be able to play music. And uh, when I see the love like that, uh, it humbles me every time that my music can uh, sustain me. You know, music is a life-giving thing. Uh, and I am very grateful to music. Uh, and it's allowed me in its journey uh, through life now um, to meet and encounter uh, many wonderful people all around the world. And I found that, you know, when you take away the language that maybe you might not understand somewhere else, but if you take away the language, you find that right here, right here, uh, I get emotional sometimes because this is real. Right here is where it really counts. And uh, the people that I've been blessed to meet, um, they touch me right here. And so those are the people that I share with you. Uh, so I'd like to end the segment tonight uh, with help and hope from a person who also influences, influences just like Steve influences my life continuously and enriches my life with the food that I need. Uh, so without further ado for me, I'd like to close the show with our Creating Health segment and my great friend, Dr. Davis. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, some powerful stuff just about to unfold. Are you ready? God bless you. Thank you again for your generosity. I'll be back here Friday with my trio the Tony Monaco Trio featuring um, Louis Chamoose on the drums and Derek Desenzo. This will be the first time you'll get to see Derek. So thank you, everybody. God bless you. And without further ado, Dr. Ken Davis, Creating Health. Hey, y'all. Dr. KD here, Ken Davis. And uh, again, welcome to the Creating Health Show, Mind, Body, and Spirit. Again, I'm Dr. Ken Davis. And uh, again, I always thank uh, Tony Monaco for giving me the space and the opportunity to share some of these thoughts and ideas with you to help you uh, in balance of body, mind, and spirit, as the show suggests. I hope you have been enjoying the videos and you have been doing uh, the uh, exercises and suggestions uh, that we've been going over over the last several weeks. We're going to move in a new direction uh, on this video. Uh, I'm sure you will enjoy it and certainly give you some food for thought, which is what I'm going to try and attempt to do as we take this new direction. You know, there are many ideas and belief systems and uh, other things out there that we have acquired and learned uh, through society, through our upbringing, from our parents, where we grew up, uh, et cetera, it's books, experts, so-called experts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And <clears throat> many of us, uh, to never really uh, question it or look deeper into, is this really the truth? Uh, is it really so in the way everybody says it works, especially on a daily basis? Um, things that we, again, we don't look at, we don't evaluate, we just kind of accept. Things of how things actually work every day. What's behind everything? You know, the three big questions that humanity has been searching for since time immemorial is, who am I? Why am I here? And what's my mission and purpose? And I can answer those questions, that, but I'm going to save that for another tape and video. But 
we want to begin to become brutally honest with some of the concepts, the ideas, the beliefs, or what I've come to know as lies, illusions, and stories. Lies, illusions, and not necessarily the truth, but our mind has come to accept it as the truth, and we never evaluate it, as I mentioned. We never, we just accept it as so. And what if it isn't so? So my job in this video and several of the videos going forth will be to kind of evaluate these, some of the things out there that we've come to accept as so. So let's look at a couple of them. So in today's video, I wanted to discuss, are we in control really of our thoughts? Do we really control our thoughts? Do our thoughts and the other party line out there, a battle cry is that our thoughts create our reality. Do our thoughts really create our reality? Now, I'll give you an example. There is a law. So many people, uh, and I mean anything that I say, you know, I am a little bit of a renegade and I mean no disrespect in anyone's belief system or anything like that. But all I'm trying to do is get you to kind of look at what's the party line out there, what the battle cry is. So, for example, the battle cry is that there is a law. So those of you out there that may be into the law of attraction, which says, which is a universe that says, if I focus and create in my mind a certain uh, want or desire to have, then the law says, then I should manifest it. So my thoughts create my reality. If I visualize it, desire it, want it, then it should manifest. It's a law. Like gravity, if I jump out my apartment window here, I'm not going up, I'm going to go down. It's a law. So if it's a law, then it should manifest. The problem is, why doesn't it? Why doesn't it manifest if it's a law? And the thing is, we never evaluate this. So our dominant thought creates our reality. Our dominant thought should manifest whatever it is that we're desiring to take place. And if you notice, it doesn't happen. Doesn't happen many times. I'll give you an example. Why is it that we just recently watched a great Super Bowl? And before the game, if you notice, many, many times, you know, both teams are kneeling and they're praying or they're asking for guidance. They're asking for protection. They're praying and asking to let me just do a good job and win the game and et cetera, et cetera. And both teams are praying and asking equally, I believe. But why is it that one team, not necessarily praying or asking more than the other, wins the game and the other team doesn't? They're just asking just both as intense. Now, our experts and other people in different circles will say, well, you know, it's karma, it's past lives, it's uh, uh, their thought was more dominant over the other, but we never, ever, ever come to think about why that's so. Also, it says that, and we need to look at this, we need to evaluate the truth behind this. Why is that? Also, have you ever noticed that sometimes that we're focusing, getting back to do our thought, are we really in control of our thoughts? Do our thoughts create our reality? We're thinking about, we're driving down the highway or whatever, and we just came from uh, a party or we went to the movies or we visited our friends or family and we're feeling great and we're feeling up and enjoyed and happy. And we're driving home, and all of a sudden, out of seemingly nowhere, these negative thoughts and emotions overtake us. We didn't ask for it. We didn't want it. 
Where does it come from? Why in that moment does this negative thought appear in our mind? Or what people would call even the subconscious mind, but it's not so subconscious, right there. How does that happen? What is that? What's in control of that? What's behind that? And vice versa. I'm thinking negative. I have these negative thoughts. I had a negative experience driving down the highway, going home or to work or wherever. And all of a sudden, these positive thoughts come over me or enter into the mind. And you weren't necessarily thinking about it, right? But it appears out of seemingly nowhere. What is that? How does it happen? What's behind it? These are the things that we're going to discuss as we move forth over the weeks. Also, you ever notice that in life, that at a bigger scale, you know, individuals create, out of seemingly nowhere, an idea appears. That someone's life is so-called going negative, and an idea appears in their mind, and they venture forth, and their life changes and vice versa. So-called negative things that we never wanted, never looked at, never dreamed of happening in our life appear and happen. And the, again, the opposite. Positive things that are going on in our life, and all of a sudden something happens out of seemingly nowhere, similar, and this negative reaction occurs. And again, the so-called experts and books and thousands and millions of books will give all kinds of reasons as to what's behind it, why it is, oh, it's the power of your subconscious mind, you're thinking negative. As I mentioned earlier, there's karma, there's past lives, there's this, not necessarily, but we never really look deeper as to what's going on. What's really driving our life on a daily, daily basis? How does it work on a daily basis from the moment we get up in the morning till when we go to bed at night? So for example, what happens is that, you know, think about where, you know, we can get up in the morning or we enter into kind of waking consciousness as we start to awake from sleep. And we went to bed feeling okay and we wake up again in the morning and all these negative emotions and feelings and thoughts enter into us that we didn't, we weren't thinking about a second ago. Where does that come from? How does it happen? What's behind it? These are the things that we need to become brutally honest with understanding what's behind it and, and so forth. So I want you to look at this We'll go deeper into this, but I want to give you food for thought to start to look at it. But again, if thoughts, in closing, if thoughts create your reality, right? And, if, and what you focus on are the dominant thoughts in your mind, there's a law that says should manifest. And if you notice, the majority of people, it doesn't. It doesn't work the way it says it does, and that's something that we need to look at and investigate. The same with our emotions and thoughts and feelings, what's really behind it. What's really behind what we would call negative thinking or negative emotions and feelings that enter into our mind at a point when we're not asking for it, we're not looking to have it, but it appears. And there is a reason and there is a cause and there is something behind it. And this is what we want to discuss as we move forward. So food for thought. I'm Dr. Ken Davis. This is the Creating Health Show, Mind, Body, and Spirit. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you and talking to you next week. Please look at what we're talking about and also review some of the old tapes that we've done. Thanks for your time. And I always thank Tony Monaco. And as always, enjoy Tony and enjoy the music. Blessings to all.